Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basic composition of blood. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. So in hematology, we're going to be talking all about blood. The average adult human has around six liters of blood. So blood is a body fluid in the circulatory system that delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic waste products away from those same cells. Blood is composed of blood cells suspended in blood plasma. Plasma is a yellow colored fluid that accounts for around 55% of the total volume of blood. Plasma is mainly composed of water, but also has carbohydrates, proteins, hormones, fats, enzymes, vitamins, and dissolved ions in it as well. In terms of blood cells, there are three main types. Red blood cells, which are also called erythrocytes. So these account for about 45% of the total content of blood. White blood cells, which are also called leukocytes, and platelets, which are also called thrombocytes. On the previous slide, we discussed what plasma is and some of the contents of plasma. Uh, one of those uh, were proteins. So the main protein type in the plasma is called albumin. We're going to be talking about albumin a lot of um, in the clinical chemistry courses, um, but we will discuss it briefly within this lecture. Albumin accounts for about 60% of the total amount of proteins within the plasma. It's a transport protein, transporting heme and bilirubin, and also helps to maintain osmotic pressure. So heme is the non-protein part of hemoglobin. Heme is the molecule that makes hemoglobin red. Bilirubin is produced from the normal breakdown of the heme portion of the hemoglobin molecule. We'll be discussing bilirubin a lot in clinical chemistry. Here's a great picture representation that shows the contents of blood. So this is a spun down blood sample. When I say spun down, I mean it's a sample that's been centrifuged. The top yellowish fluid here is the plasma, which again contains primarily water with proteins, hormones, enzymes, etc. in it. The bottom red part in this photo is the red blood cells or erythrocytes. The middle portion, so in between the plasma and the red blood cells, so this like white layer in between the plasma and the red blood cells, is called the Buffy coat. This contains um, the sample's white blood cells and platelets. So there are no cells in the plasma in a centrifuge sample. Uh, the red cells are on the bottom and the white cells and platelets are in the middle in that white Buffy coat. So if a patient has a very elevated white blood cell count, that Buffy coat is going to be much thicker than what it is in this picture. If the patient has an elevated red blood cell count, the red portion on the bottom is going to be larger than in this photo. And if they have a low red blood cell count, that red portion is going to be smaller than in this picture. But this is what a normal sample that has been centrifuged would look like. So the main cell type in the peripheral blood are the erythrocytes or red blood cells. Uh, they contain hemoglobin, which is a protein that carries oxygen. A mature erythrocyte does not contain a nucleus. The normal range for red blood cells in men is five times 10 to the 12th power per liter and 4.5 times 10 to the 12th power liter in women. We will discuss this in a later lecture, uh, but there is a hormone called erythropoietin or EPO that stimulates the production of red blood cells. So men have a stimulatory response of androgens on erythropoietin that women do not have. So they naturally in general produce more red blood cells than women. So this is why uh, males have a slightly higher red blood cell reference range than women. Red blood cells survive, survive around 120 days in the peripheral bloodstream. White blood cells or leukocytes are part of the body's immune system and are responsible for defending against foreign antigens like viruses and bacteria. They have the ability to do something called diapodesis, which is where the white blood cells move out of the circulatory system and towards the site of tissue damage or infection. 
They live around 13 to 20 days in the peripheral bloodstream. Normal adults should have from around 4 to 11 times 10 to the 9th power per liter of white blood cells. And remember, these are present in the Buffy coat in the spun down blood sample. So if a patient has less than the reference range, the Buffy coat is going to be super small. If they have a higher than normal range, then this is indicated on this slide, then the Buffy coat is going to be larger than normal. The drawing on the right hand side of this slide shows the different white blood cells. Monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and neutrophils. We're going to talk about each individual one. In the world of clinical laboratory professionals, you will find we tend to abbreviate a lot of different things. I've listed the nicknames for these leukocytes here. Lymphocytes are commonly referred to as lymphs, monocytes as monos, eosinophils as eos, and basophils as basos. Um, just as a quick note here, this is the basic introduction to blood composition. So I have kind of just grazed over um, all of these different white blood cells here in this lecture. Um, however, if you check out my uh, lecture on leukocytes specifically, I go into much more detail about all of these different types of white blood cells. The first leukocyte we're going to discuss is called the neutrophil. This is the most prevalent of the leukocytes, accounting for around 50 to 70% of the white blood cells in a normal adult's peripheral bloodstream. When an invader enters the body, the neutrophils are the, one of the first to respond. They travel to the site of infection, where they destroy the microorganisms by ingesting them and releasing enzymes that kill them. They are commonly associated with bacterial infections and also with acute inflammation. So these photos here show what neutrophils look like under the microscope. With a right gene sustain, the neutrophil has a purple nucleus. So the most mature neutrophil, called the segmented neutrophil, has three to five lobe nucleus joined together by slender strands. The cytoplasm stains a pale pink color. So all three of these uh, white blood cells here are segmented neutrophils. Lymphocytes account for 25 to 40 percent of white blood cells in the peripheral bloodstream. Please pay careful attention to the terms here. A lot of students will get the terms leukocyte and lymphocyte confused. All lymphocytes are leukocytes, but not all leukocytes are lymphocytes. So leukocytes means white blood cell and a lymphocyte is a white blood cell, but a white blood cell isn't always a lymphocyte. So lymphocytes help the immune system to remember every antigen that it comes in contact with. There are B and T lymphocytes. However, you are unable to tell the difference between them when looking at them under a microscope. Lymphocytes appear as dark purple with a deep bluish nucleus and a sky blue cytoplasm. Monocytes account for 3 to 11% of white blood cells within the peripheral bloodstream. Along with lymphocytes, monocytes help to initiate and regulate the body's immune responses. They're considered scavenger cells and can phagocytize or eat up any foreign material. Under the microscope, monocytes can be spherical or even amoeboid in shape with a nucleus that can be bean shaped. They also can have vacuoles present within the cytoplasm. Eosinophils account for 0 to 5% of the total white blood cells in the peripheral bloodstream. They are commonly associated in allergic or toxic reactions and parasitic infections. They have a coarsely clumped purple 2 to 3 lobe no nucleus with thin filaments that connect those lobes. The characteristic feature of eosinophils is their abundant red to orange brown granules present within their cytoplasm, as you can see in these two pictures here on the right hand slide. Eosinophils are one of my favorite cells. I think they're actually really, really beautiful. Basophils are the least prevalent leukocyte within the peripheral bloodstream, with 0 to 1% of the total white blood cells present. They usually have a two lobe nucleus that is connected by a thin filament. They're characterized by large, heavily stained granules that are deep purple to black in color. Oftentimes, you cannot even see the nucleus because there are so many deep colored granules. And lastly, platelets or thrombocytes. They're responsible for helping to aid in hemostasis, which is the process that stops bleeding after injury. 
They circulate the peripheral blood inactivated. They just kind of hang out until an injury occurs. And when that occurs, they adhere and aggregate to the blood vessel wall where the injury occurred and form a plug to help stop bleeding. We'll discuss this process in greater detail in the coagulation section of the hematology course, uh, specifically the hemostasis lecture. Platelets live around 10 days in the peripheral blood, and the normal reference range for an adult is 150 to 440 times 10 to the ninth power per liter. So that, include, that concludes the lecture on blood composition. Um, please uh, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, if you would like to leave a comment, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below um, or give me any suggestions on upcoming videos.